So I want to talk today about media delivery, or better, about the media delivery pipeline. So what is part of the media delivery pipeline? So you have on the one hand side the content owner, you have a CEN, and you have a player, and they want to have a party, so they go into a... Oh, bad damn it. What's up here? I know, I mean, did you ever ask yourself, why is there so much rebuffering in the world? That's also something we are asking ourselves. So if I talk about we, that's a small team inside Akamai. And we are striving actually for streaming, um, excellent streaming performance. Two years ago, we started a project and we wanted to uncover the mystery behind rebuffering. So we wanted to quantify what are the rebuffering courses and offer mitigation strategies for those. So what do we need for that? Obviously, we need a good data set, and this data set should contain server-side data and client-side data. So what we went out to is we use CMCD, which will bring us client-side information. We will use our server-side information from the Akamai logs. We obviously need a player a large enough player base in order to provide us with this information. And luckily, we could convince Roku to actually implement CMCD support in their player. So it's nowadays widely available. And as I said, we have our internal logs. So now that we have established a communication between the player and the platform and the origin, we started to head out and we're looking for some content owners. Luckily, we also got two content owners on board. And I will talk today mainly about what, but if you're interested in live, please get in touch with me. We can talk about that later as well. So at peak, what we are talking about is we analyzed traffic of around about three terabytes per second. And we had around about 400,000 to 800,000 buffer starvation events per day. So now you might say, I mean, that sounds not too much. But on the other hand, buffer starvation is something which is very rare. So if you want to pull out a complete session, you still have to go through the full data set, so through all the requests. And then you're talking about really some sort of a lot of data. So we were actually surprised at the end because the signal you get can be very much mixed up because you have a lot of stuff we already talked about today. For example, add insertion, multi-CDN setup, CDN failover such that if you're only collecting logs from a single CDN, it can be very hard to actually get a very clean signal. So most of the time, what we actually did is we tried to sanitize the data set. After sanitization, we started off. And what we looked at first is, what is actually the distribution of mean throughput for sessions which had rebuffering versus sessions which didn't have rebuffering? And what you can see is that in the higher throughput area, the distribution looks more or less similar. So you have a flat curve which extends to the end. But at the low throughput case, you have a high bump for the sessions which actually have rebuffering. So the median is around about six megabits per second. So what can we do? We can try to divide our data set in sessions which have very low throughput and sessions which have high throughput. And let's look first at those sessions which have a lower throughput. So in the low throughput case, as I already mentioned, you have a high peak at very low throughput. And we were wondering, OK, what is the reason for that? So if you look at the low throughput sessions, we can split those by network type. And we see that most of those sessions are actually on fixed line. However, if we now look at those sessions which had a buffer starvation event, the distribution changes. And suddenly, we get a much, much stronger contribution from cellular wireless networks as well as from satellite networks. Moreover, if you're looking into specifically those um, individual sessions, what you will notice is that the throughput as well as the latency fluctuates much more in cellular and wireless networks than in the fixed line and cable networks. So what we learned from that is basically that in the end, the latency you have, even for the low throughput case, and the what environment really matters. So, and if I talk about latency, then I talk always about the client actually makes a request at the beginning. The signal has to travel to the server. 
the server takes some time in order to fetch the content, and then it will reply. And now you have several cases. For example, if you have a satellite connection, then this static latency between the time when the client actually makes the request until the client receives the first byte of the res response can be significant. We are talking here about two seconds, three seconds, if you think about geostationary satellite connections. On the other hand, I mean for Starlink, that is much, much slower. Okay, so how can you actually mitigate this? Um, basically, there is no golden rule here. However, if you think about this throughput window here, we can look at server-side data and compare this to the client-side measured throughput. So as I, or, as I already said, um, for those satellite providers, if we look at all sessions coming from those ASN numbers, we see a median throughput between 0.5 megabits per second up to 1 megabit per second. On the other hand, if I look at the server-side data, then I can, for example, say, okay, I only want to look at throughput for object sizes which are larger than 1 megabyte. And if I do that, then suddenly I see that the throughput potential from our end is much higher. So the conclusion, at least for those connections where you have a static latency dropout, may it be due to middle boxes, may it be just due to the signal runtime is, try to fetch as much content as possible in one chunk. Don't make small requests. So for the low throughput case, what I want to highlight here is Latency measures, and it's not only for satellite connections, as I said before, because also on those fiber connections, you have home Wi-Fi router setups. You might have middle boxes like NAT64, NAT46. Um, you have NAT-NAT combinations, which all have some packet buffers where you can create transient, transient latency, which then in the end will also uh, translate into a huge variation in the measured throughput. Potential mitigation strategies here are basically you should be aware of what your lowest quality rendition is and how large those segments are. If you have small segment sizes and small segment durations, then it will take a significant amount of time to get a decent throughput estimate. So the solution is in that respect for your low rendition, try to use longer segment durations and for what you could also think about increasing the buffer. And from a network stack layer, you should think about using multiplex connections so that you only have a single TCP or UDP connection. So use something like H2 or H3, whereas H2 is probably not necessarily the best solution when you have packet loss because of head of line blocking. Okay. First, we looked at the low throughput case. Now I think it's much more interesting to look into that area. Because usually what you would expect is those boxes already experience a lot of throughput. So you see median throughput of 40 megabits per second, 60 megabits per second. And nevertheless, once in the whole session runtime, they experience a buffer starvation event. And the question is, why? Where does it come from? From a distribution, you would say, OK, it shouldn't be. As I already said, this is now a plot of the relative change of the measured throughput and the relative frequency, um, again, broken out for sessions with buffer starvation and sessions without buffer starvation. And what you can see is that even for the throughput window from 6 megabits per second to 60 megabits per second, there is a small shift still between sessions without buffer starvation events and sessions with buffer starvation events. However, if you go to higher throughput, what you will see those distributions come closer and closer together and they match on top of each other. So what is now common to all of those sessions? It's probably not the fluctuation throughput. But what is it? I can only say the answer is complicated. So on the one hand side, you have user or player induced rebuffering, buffer starvation events. For example, the user decided to seek, rewind, fast forward, skipping the front credits without the buffer being large enough, stuff like that. You can have content-induced rebuffering, for example, decoding issues, so the player is not really happy with what it received, and those decoding issues could either be because of player capabilities, or on the other hand, it got served from the CDN something which it didn't like. 
for example, due to content, um, content corruption. Last but not least, uh, you could also have rebuffering during startup, so you started to play before you actually reached a decently large, large buffer level. If you're curious about all those vast situations of signatures and how you can qualitatively determine them, I mean, please get in touch with me. I have much, much more data to show than I have time to talk, unfortunately. But I brought a small example um, also for the high throughput case. And I think this is particularly interesting because we are still lagging a lot of data in order to understand all those different cases and to be able to quanti uh, quantify those. So again, what is plotted is on the uh, horizontal axis, you have time. And on the vertical axis, we have on the one hand side the measured throughput and the top bit rate. And what you can see is the measured throughput at the beginning is OK. It's between 20 and 60 megabits per second. And then suddenly it drops. But also the announced top bit rate, so the bit rate the player is allowed to fetch from the player perspective drops as well. So what happens? If you look at those logs, the player actually is not really happy with what it receives from the, from the uh, CDN. And it, it switches down and down and requesting the same fragment, but always on a lower rendition. It's very hard from our end to tell, I mean, what's really going wrong there. It could be that there's a decode issue with this specific segment on the player side. It could also be that the content which is served from the CDN is just not something the player didn't expect. So here it would really help if we, for example, would extend CMCD to also get a little bit more from the player perspective to know why it, for example, drops the top bit rate. So as I already said, in the high throughput case, unfortunately, there is no silver bullet. However, I have still some takeaway message for you, and I really would like that you take this home. Do not think about the ecosystem um, of media delivery as individual components. So don't get the player from, from that point, and then you just choose arbitrarily a CDN and another packager, and then say, OK, those components will somehow work together. No, it's more the interplay between the encoder, the CDN, and the player is what features great streaming experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm.